Hi. I'm somewhere different this time. Um, I've had to come to Switzerland to do a couple of things. And so I thought it would just be the perfect spot to talk about Freddy and Switzerland. Um, where I am now, I'm here in Claude Nobbs Chalet, where Freddy used to visit so often. Um, Claude and Freddy were friends for so, so many years, long before I met him. Um, he just felt something special here. And when he had friends like Claude around, Claude, Thierry, all these people, he felt safe. He felt that he could be himself. Um, of course, the studio was here. And there's even a little bit of the studio here in the chalet in that I'm sitting next to the piano that was in the studio. So if you think, think of the fingers that have actually played this piano. Um, it, this is history. This is absolute history. So many of the songs, so many of the songs that you all know and love were recorded here. For me, I was, the first time I was here was in 1981. Um, we were staying at the Montreux Palace and it was the session where Under Pressure was started. I mean, you all know the story of Under Pressure, how David Bowie turned up and they worked for hours and hours and hours non-stop. They went out to eat, forgot what they were doing and it all started over again. Um, it's, it's wonderful how memories just create, it, memories of what your life is made of. You know, when you're young, what you do is what you think about all these years later. And coming back to this place, seeing it after so many years, is, it, it just brings everything back to life again. You look, hopefully a little bit later you will see, the, um, when we go down into the city, we'll just see what's go. you know, you can see and feel everything that's going, going on. You will hear some noise in the background because I'm not here alone. I am doing some other work. But um, look, what can I say? It, it's mantra. You, so many of you already know the feeling here, what, what, what Freddie felt here, this sense of peace, the beauty of the landscape you cannot beat. And literally coming up to the chalet, you, you, you see everything from a different angle. And it's absolutely wonderful, absolutely wonderful. So, I mean, look, I will, I will always tell anybody, just make sure you get here sometime in your life. You are missing so much if you don't. Um, you get to see, you can see the studio, the studio where they created so much music. You get to see people, you get to feel comfortable. That's about it, I can say here. I mean, we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll be able to show you a little bit of what's around here. Um, it, it's an amazing place. I mean, there's even the archives, if you think, the archives of the whole 50 odd years of the Montreux Jazz Festival are sitting here behind us. This, this is really a place of history. I'm back, but not where I hoped I would be. Um, I apologize for not being able to carry on like I'd hoped to earlier on, but the time, enemy of us all, just took over and there was just no chance to do anything within the city. I, don't, I know most of you know how the band originally turned up there to record in 1978 to start the jazz album. It was the first time they were at the studio. It was brand new. It was state of the art. 
every big artist had recorded there because it had been open for a year at that point. In the end, they actually really liked it so much. They liked the whole setup. They bought it. <laughs> um, if you actually think of what Freddie's comment was at the time, um, and this is a quote from Freddie in an interview, um, when someone asked about what did he think of the studio, he actually said the best place for it would be at the bottom of the lake. The only reason for that was because Montreux was a very small town. There was very little nightlife. There was little for him to do, which sort of didn't really fit with Freddie Mercury. Um, in the end, it all turned round, in fact, and because of the quietness, because of being able to just actually be out and people would leave him alone. For those last years, he spent so much more time in Montreux because it just gave him that peace that he was looking for that he could never find in London. He had the apartment for the last year, maybe two years of his life. And he wrote the last music that he ever created at that apartment. Um, I said in the previous part of this that everybody should see Montreux. Everybody, if it is at all possible, should come to the city because you all know the song, A Winter's Tale. You just stand on the shore of the lake and you are in that song. You just stand there and think of the words, think of the lyrics, and they are all around you. It is something that when you're there, you cannot help but feel. Montra was actually a big part of Freddie's life. In, you know, if you think of the times between 1978 and 1991 that he was there, they did a lot of recording there. Um, he always had friends there. He took friends with him if he was going to be there for any length of time. So that the lack of entertainment at night was made up for when he was in the company I mean, you've seen the pictures of Barbara, Barbara Valentin on the balcony, standing there with Freddie. Um, he always had someone there who would make him laugh, which is what he absolutely adored. That was Freddie. I said earlier on about under pressure, and the thing is that for me was the most, that was the first time you have to remember, this was 1980, 81, that we did that, that for me, I, Switzerland was this place that you saw in James Bond films, not a place that you would think that I would be able to be there. Um, and then over the years, up until, up until now, it has become very much like a home away from home. The people that I know, I'm, I've, I'm here in Geneva at the moment because I was asked here by friends. People who just, we haven't, I haven't been able to see for so long because of the problems with the pandemic. It's just being able to go to different places to experience different things. That's what Freddie loved about touring, to go to be in different places, to appreciate the culture, to appreciate the shopping, 
you know, it, that, that was why Freddie was so happy to do it. Touring itself was not great. He hated the getting up in the mornings. He hated the actual travel between the shows, the shows themselves he loved. You know, you all know that his home was on the stage. That's where he felt comfortable with all of the fans. But the in-between parts were not to his taste, except when he was in a city for a day and he could get out and about and he could see places, particularly Japan. He spent more time shopping there than he ever did on stage. So, you know, he was able to adapt. He was able to do what he wanted to do when he wanted to do it. One thing that I've had uh, so many requests over the last week or so from different, from emails, from Instagram, from Facebook, everything. Please would I address what goes on on the internet with the people who just sort of do not agree with things that so many, so many fans say. That's, I mean, me, um, let, let me just say this one thing. Everybody has the right to voice their opinion. It's one of the last things that we have the freedom to do is to voice our opinion. If people don't like me, they're going to say whatever they like about me. I talk to you fans because you keep asking me to, you keep asking me questions. I have never thought of myself as a rude person. So if I'm asked a question, I will answer it. And whether people like that idea or not, they can say what they like. That's their prerogative. But if any of you continue asking me questions, I will be giving you answers. Once the last person asks the last question, then I stay at home, I enjoy my garden, I enjoy the rest of my life. And the thing is, people complain about cover bands doing this and people pretending to be Freddy. People do this because the fans ask for it. That's why they put themselves out in front of everybody to please the people who want it. If you don't like it, that's fine. You're allowed to. But let the other fans who do enjoy these things, let them have their opinion as well. Okay, enough of this seriousness. Um, I've got to get on. I've got to get on and do some other things. So I will be back on your screen again sometime soon. <laughs> Don't ask me how long, when, but I will be there. All right. So take care of yourselves, please. Look after yourselves and talk to you soon. Bye.